How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing all good. Um, I'm going to do today a batik, but without wax. And I had, uh, I've been using masa paper. It's something that um, I had stopped using a long time ago and rediscovered it again. And you know how old things are new? Well, um, masa paper is what I'm using. So I um, did this one on watercolor paper, but I pressed too hard on the paper and you couldn't really see all the little wrinkles on it. So today I'm going to attempt to do this, but I'm, instead of watercolor, I'm going to try it on wood and see if it works. I don't know if it will or not, but the materials that you will need is tracing paper so you can trace your bird on, masa paper, which is what we're going to be painting on, some transfer paper, which is uh, really graphite paper, not carbon paper. I had this little five by seven uh, little wood frame. I'm going to use that and a little bucket of water. You will also need a Sharpie. I'm using an ultra fine, a point pen and some watercolors of your choice and sits a bird. Uh, it doesn't matter, but I will be using um, Golden's uh, Core watercolor paints and I'll be using uh, purple Piroli red light um, Paints gray, ultramarine blue, and dioxazine purple, and some little yellow that I have left here on my palette. Uh, as you know, I'm an artist educator for Golden Paints, and I want to thank Golden Paints for supplying us all the materials that we need here um, to make this um, video possible. So thank you so much, Golden, for giving us the paints. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our um, tracing and put it on a palette paper. And then we're gonna put the transfer paper underneath. Okay, and you know how to do this, but I'm just, for those of you who are new, and then you're gonna take a little stylus and transfer your pattern onto your paper. And I've done that already. So I'm gonna get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. I don't need the stylus either. And if you can see the, the tracing on it is very light. So I am going to move my water right now so we don't have a little accident. And I'm going to take my Sharpie. And when you use your Sharpie, do it like really straight down. And I'm going to be very loose with this one. I'm going to kind of do an abstract painting here with a bird. Uh, I'm just following my lines. Let me do his eyes really round. The one that I have here is kind of very definite. So let's do it a little different and see, see what happens with it. I'm going to put some little feathers on here and some little feathers on here coming out. And he's going to be standing on a little branch somewhere. So this is our branch. And we're going to put some little leaves just to make it a little different than the original painting. There we go. So I don't think we need any more than that. Just keep it simple. But I like doing my pen work because this is going to really uh, stand out when we do the, the painting uh, on a mass of paper. Okay, so I'm going to put my stylus away, my um, Sharpie away. Oh, and don't forget to sign it. Chris, Cruz, there we go. Okay, so fingers crossed. Let's hope this works. I'm going to take my water and I am going to dunk this little guy in my water um, to scrunch and haul up. I'm also going to use golden soft gel mat to put this little guy onto my wooden panel. For that, I'm going to use a big brush. I'm using a silver silk 88, and this is an oval number eight, which is a really good size to, to use for this. So I'm going to open up my soft gel mat and I'm going to take my little bird and I'm going to crumple this paper. I'm using the shiny side of the paper and I'm going to dump dunk the paper in here and really start kind of squishing it around so that the paper gets really nice and soft and wrinkled. I really want this paper to be very pliable. And for some reason this paper just does awesome work. I don't know. Okay, so don't leave it on there too too long. I'm just making sure it's really wrinkled and I'm going to squeeze all that excess water out get rid of my water over here so we don't have an accident 
I'm gonna take my little wood panel and I cut the paper kind of the same size of what I'm working on to make it a little bit easier. So when you're opening your paper, see how I'm going very soft and delicate because now this paper is so, so brittle that it's going to break. See, I already had a little hole there, but I'll show you how to fix that. So this little guy is going to go on here like that, and I'm going to set him up wherever I want him to be. And this is where he's going to live for now. Okay, so... There's two ways to do this. I can do this this way or that way. I'm going to do it this way. I think it's a little easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and remember there's a hole there, so I'm going to show you how to fix that. So I'm going to turn my paper in half, and I'm going to take my soft gel mat, and I'm going to put it on my wood, and I think this is going to work really awesome on wood. So I see we discover something new every day. I just kind of looked around in my closet and see what I had and just kind of looked good. So now I'm gonna take my little birdie here and make sure that he fits on the paper. This is the, the most important part for now. We wanna make sure that all of this goes down really nice. And I'm just patting my paper. I'm not pressing very hard. Here, I don't kind of like that too much, so I'm going to just stretch it out a little bit. And the excess of the paper, just don't worry about it. Just when you finish painting, just take a little sharpie, I mean, um, a little an exacto knife and cut it. Or the other way to do it is once it's completely dry, just kind of peel the paper off from the side here while it's wet. And there you go. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other part. And this video I am doing for my friend Martha because she <laughs> she lives in Florida. I live in Alabama. And um, her and I paint a lot over the phone. And sometimes describing things are not as easy on the phone as it is in person. So I said to her, I said, okay, Martha, I'm going to make a video just for you. So Martha, here it goes. So I'm going to try to straighten this out just a tad because it's a little crooked on here. And now I'm going to, no, nah, maybe not. Maybe it's going to mess it up. Let's see. There. And see how the paper starts to rip because it's very delicate? So I'm just going to let it be and not worry about the little edges there. Okay, so pat it down, cover that little hole. Whoops, I made a bigger hole. True, that's not good. Okay, so I'm going to put my paper down, and I'm going to take a little bit of my matte gel and just glue it down there so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so there we go. So we don't really want to do uh, too much more touching on this because, as you can see, it's very delicate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I have a number eight silver brush uh, ruby satin round. And I have a piece of palette paper here that, as you can see, has been used in uh, prior videos. And I'm going to line this up so that, and I'm going to put my little bird here, see what we can do to make them kind of the same. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go with my lighter colors. So I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow. This is um, watercolor paints. So I'm just going to blot it on my bird. I am not painting. I'm just kind of letting the color down on my little bird. And you know what? I think this is really going to work on wood. I really like this. Okay, the red, I'm just going to water it down a little bit. Because we're going to go light first and then dark. So that's a little bit too dark for my taste. So I'm going to take a little bit of that and put it down here. Much better. I want just a light little color of yellow, I mean of red on here. Oh yeah, that's going to look really, really good. Uh, I have some, um, here's some blue. This is so pretty. This is cerulean blue. This is a really pretty color. So I'm just going to, again, water it down. And I'm going to come right here in this little area and put some of that color in. And because it has yellow, it's starting to turn a little green, which is fine with me. But I'm going to put my blue straight up on top here on this little guy. And I am loving this effect. 
I don't know about you guys, but I think it's pretty cool. So I'm going to come down here and do the little blue. And I'm going to add some little yellow here since the original has a little yellow in it. And notice I'm just dropping paint. Look, I'm going to do a slow motion. I pick up the paint and I come here, drop, tap, tap, tap. Okay. So the black of the eyes, I have some paints gray here. I'm going to let that area dry a little bit because I don't want it to bleed. But I have some greens. This is a terra verde color. And I'm just going to put it on here because it's a very light green. And I'm just going to pretend that we have some little leaves here. And the brown is a little bit of orange that I had left over from a prior project and just threw it in here. Put a little blue and make a little brown. Okay, so I'm gonna just, just wet it, make that a little brown. This is working really, really good. I like it. And put a little brown in here to darken that area a little bit darking a little bit up here and you see these little fibers lifting up don't worry about that um it's just part of the process and when it dries you won't even see it you won't even notice it so i think it needs a little bit more red so i'm gonna take a little red here and now my colors are gonna start becoming a little bit more solid so i'm just gonna drop some of that red in here that looks really good and for the background, I'm going to take some of this dioxazine purple that I have in here. And I'm just going to water it down. Ooh, that's too strong. Oof. So with my brush, I'm just going to pick that up. Just going around here. Very, very light. And this is... <laughs> This is the bird that Martha and I have painted. I can't tell you how many times, but um, we just love this little guy. I think he's pretty cute. Uh, just go around the bottom here and put some more purple. Okay, and for the top, I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow on the background here somehow. And like I said, you can just take this paper and just rip it off since it's wet. And when it's completely dry, take a nail file and file it down and all that paper will come off. Okay. Now, around his eyes, we have some yellow. So what I want to do is I want to get yellow in my brush, but I don't want to get tons of yellow because I don't want it to spread everywhere. So I'm going to use a smaller brush. I have this little detail brush. Um, it's an Ultra Mini Script Liner 10 slash 0. And I am going to pick up a little bit of paint on here and just wipe the side of my uh, palette and I'm just gonna drop my color in here. Whoop, too much. Okay, there we go. That's what I want, a little yellow. Okay, now we're gonna do the beak. And the beak, well, we'll take this little brown here and use this for the beak. And a little bit of Payne's Gray. I'm just gonna take some of my green and just make this dark. Okay, uh, let's put a little dark here on the branch to separate that. See, this is taking no time at all. That's, that's what the cool part of all this is. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my blue again and come here and just darken that. And I really would like to see some, maybe some of that red back here in the background. So it's kind of like a reflection coming in over here. See that? And then take some yellow and go right next to it. So we have the light coming down and the dark here. Now I'm going to put a little bit more green on the leaves just so that we know that they're leaves in here. And this is like the, the best way to, I, I mean, I'm just like super excited that this is really working out. Um, I'm going to be trying other ways to doing these too. So just keep watching. And then you can just paint the edges really nice. So for the eye, I'm going to take my paints gray and I'm not going to have any water in it. 
I'm just gonna put a little bit of that, a little bit more, and let it spread. What do you think? I think it I think it looks pretty good. I think like quit while you're ahead. Now, once it dries, if you wanted to highlight some of these areas, I would just take a pastel pencil, which is probably what well, I'll do maybe tomorrow when it's dry, and just highlight it. But I think he looks pretty good the way he is. He's supposed to be a batik, and it's not supposed to be really precise. And this here is supposed to bleed, so I like the way that happened. Uh, I think still I would like a little bit more red. This is a pretty red, and I just want to see more of it on this bird. There we go. Much nicer. And the blue uh, that we have, we're going to just take a little bit of that and just make it a little stronger up here. Just like that. That looks good. And I'm going to throw some of that yellow here so that it turns into a little orangey color and lighten up that area right here. So I would say this little baby is done. If we keep doing anything, the yellow, what I'm going to do is once it dries, I'm going to take some little chalk pencil with a little bright yellow to brighten this up because this is too deep. But otherwise, I think we have a success here. I'm going to put a little bit of that dark in here. And I think it looks great. So um, if you like it, thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. And uh, like I said, this is a request from my friend Martha. So Martha, I hope you like this. And just um, stay tuned for more videos to come. Thank you so much for watching me. And um, I'll see you at the next video.